size matters. And usually, if it's bigger, it's better. But that's not always the case, and Arduinos are no different. Sure, if you're making a big project with dozens of sensors and motors, an Arduino Mega has all the pins you need. There's 54 in total. For most people, an Uno or similar is all you really need. But if you want to put an Arduino onto something that moves, something smaller works better. This is an Arduino Nano, and it's about the size of a 2x6 LEGO plate. This DigiSpark is half that size, and a lot of that is the built-in USB plug. Both of these Arduinos have enough pins to run a few sensors to send and receive signals, but are small enough to build into the train or even the locomotive itself. One note, these usually come as kits and you need to solder the pins to the ball yourself. So if you haven't got a soldering iron, get one and use it safely. For this video, I'm going to integrate a nano into this train. To start, I'm going to put an ultrasonic distance sensor on each end so that the train knows when to stop. That means I have to rebuild the front end of this loco a little to make space, and use a few clips to hold it in place on an extra plate, which I mount behind the front grille. You can learn more about ultrasonic sensors in tutorial 4, but basically these sensors bounce out sound waves and listen for the echo, just like a bat or a parking sensor. A few bricks and a plate will hold that down in place. And there we go. Each ultrasonic sensor needs two pins on our Arduino, plus power and ground, so I'm running four wires along the length of this locomotive. So that's one set on the front, and I'll add one to the end of the train in a minute. I'll also run an infrared LED to the train's power function sensor, so that the Arduino can send signals to the motor just like a normal power functions remote. Tutorial 11 covered how that works if you haven't seen it already, but for now we'll just clip the infrared LED straight on top of the IR receiver. And that's the locomotive ready. Now we can hide an Arduino in here if we want, or place it in one of the wagons if you don't have space in your locomotive for your Arduino. But there's one little problem. We need power to make the Arduino work. We don't want to run a power cable, so we need to think about batteries. Arduinos need either 5 volts or 3.3 volts to work, depending on which one you have, and there's a few ways you can power them. Option 1 connect batteries to the barrel connector or VIN pin of your Arduino. You need to supply 1 volt more than your Arduino needs, so if you want 5 volts you need to supply at least 6 volts, which is 4 AA batteries or two of these 18650 lithium ion batteries. Don't waste your money on these 9 volt batteries. They're too expensive and they don't hold much power. Option 2, use fewer batteries such as a pair of AAAs with a step-up converter. These little boards boost the power up to a specified voltage and you can get them from any hobby electronics store or online. Option 3, a USB power bank. Just charge it up, plug in your Arduino with the appropriate USB cable and off you go. good ones have a power button to turn things on as well. This is the simplest solution and it's what I'm using in this tutorial. So here's my Arduino wagon that I've made to carry all this. I've loaded everything onto an open wagon so that you can see how it works even though it looks a bit crazy. Uh, here's my battery pack connected to my Arduino Nano, and that's connected to the infrared LED and the front ultrasonic sensor. And there's a second sensor mounted on the back of the wagon. The messy wires are just extra power and ground wires to feed all the sensors. 
Talking of mess, here's the code. So big thank you to everybody who supported me in the crowdfunding campaign to get these video made and your custom messages are here. Now to get started, we need to include the Power Functions library since we're controlling a Power Functions train and you can download that here if you haven't watched tutorial 11. Then we'll add this line to define which PWM pin controls our infrared LED. Now our train has two ultrasonic sensors, but we're only ever going to be reading one of them depending on which way the train is moving. So we'll define the pins for those sensors and then use two small variables to store the pin numbers of the sensors currently in use. We'll use the front sensor as a default. We'll also add a counter variable to remember which way the train is going and to count how many times our train has moved in each direction. Here in the setup, we're going to listen to the serial monitor to see what the ultrasonic sensors are doing. We don't need that when the train's running, but it is useful when you're putting everything together. Then we define our LED and sensors as inputs and outputs. Down here in the loop function, we're going to copy in the standard code for running an ultrasonic sensor, and we covered all of that in tutorial 4. Very quickly, we pulse the trigger pin and listen for a signal on the echo pin, and then convert that signal into centimeters. The main logic happens here. If the distance is less than 16 centimeters, then we add 1 to our counter, and we call up another function called change direction. That's down here at the bottom of the code, but we need to add a bit more logic in the loop function first. This if statement helps limit the range of the sensor, and this else statement prints the sensor reading and the counter value to the serial monitor so that we can debug the sensor when we're putting it all together. You don't need that info when the train's actually running, but trust me, you'll want this when you put the train together yourself. We use the counter to determine whether we're using the front or the rear sensor. If it's an even number, then the trig pin and echo pin variables use the front pin numbers. Otherwise, they use the back pin numbers. And here's a tiny delay so that we only read the sensors 10 times a second. That extra function for changing the train direction is down here again. Remember, this happens as soon as an object is detected. We stop the train, wait for a second, or longer if you like, then again, if the counter is even, we tell the train to drive forward, else, so if not, we tell the train to drive backwards. That's all we need in the code, so we'll compile that sketch and send it to the Nano. To test it all out, I've built a very fragile wall of bricks across the track. If the train touches this, the whole thing will collapse, so let's hope it doesn't. We power it all up by turning on the train in the usual way and then turning on the power bank to fire up the Arduino. So let's press those buttons and off we go. As you can see, the train doesn't come anywhere near the wall of bricks, so we're safe there. You'll need to adjust the detection distance and the train speed in your code to match. Uh, that's a trial and error process, so there'll be lots of crashes along the way. Once it's running, you can send your trains between places using a single track instead of a loop and it'll come back to you automatically. So you don't need as much track to go long distances and you don't have to worry about the range for your train controller either. We'll build on this concept in the next video, so stay tuned for that and please give me a like and subscribe in the meantime. Thanks for watching.